In this video, I'm going to talk about using Padlet for math classes. If you want to see how to use Padlet to promote this course, hop on over to my other video and there'll be a different explanation there. Let's get started. I'm going to begin by going to Padlet.com. Padlet is free to sign up. However, it gives you a limited number of Padlets that you can create. You have the option to pay money and upgrade or the option to just re-edit the same Padlets and use them multiple times for your classroom. In this way, it's still a free tool. Let's hop on over to this Padlet page I created for math classes. I'm gonna quickly go through what I did to create this and then show you how I could use it in a math class to effectively promote this course. All of the editing for Padlets come up in this little gear corner up here. First, you can edit the title by clicking. Secondly, you can edit the description. I like to add in the prompt of what I'm using in the description. This way, even if we've gone over it in class, if a student has missed class, once they come up to this, they can quickly see exactly what they're supposed to be doing. You can edit the icon for whatever you want, and you can edit the address. I edited it, edit it to say AP Calculus because I'm going to use an AP Calculus example in this Padlet. You can choose the wallpaper, the color scheme, the font. Down here are the most important parts of the Padlet, so I want to point this out specifically. Firstly, I always put attribution on. I want my students to be responsible for what they're saying. In this way, their name appears above their posts. Secondly, I'm always careful about thinking where the post positions are. Sometimes I like to post a rubric already there. And in that case, I put the post as last, which means my first post will always show up in the top left-hand corner. If you put the post as first, each new student's post will pop up first, leaving whatever I posted initially to kind of end up at the edge of the screen and that's not, not necessarily what I want. Secondly, I always allow for comments. Allowing for comments allows for discourse in the classroom. Now over here, this is the tool that I think makes this so powerful for specifically math classes. You can choose the way students react to different prompts. In this case, I'm gonna choose grade and I'm gonna explain why. Finally, if you need to require approval or filter profanity, those options are down here. However, when I'm finished, I hit closed and here's my Padlet. Now in this case, I put as a prompt, upload a clear picture of your work. Students can simply take a picture of their work and somehow get it to their computer screen through Google Drive or Google Photos or iPhone or any, any option. And they could either upload it by pressing this button and uploading the photo or use my favorite tool, which is the snipping tool. All right, you see, I've done this before. However, let's quickly go over the snipping tool. I'm gonna to search for it. I click on the snipping tool. And I'm gonna click new. I highlight exactly what I wanna see. So I'm highlighting the problem and the work. And as you see, I'm simply using a student sample question from College Board. I hop back to my Padlet and I'm gonna hit Control V, which is just the paste option Oops, it doesn't work in this guy, so I have to delete him. And I'm going to go to my main screen and hit Control V. You see image over here, and there we go. It pops up with my image. I can then click it, and I can see it clearly. If I want to edit it and title it, I can edit it. My work, problem four. Now that my work is posted, and I've made a mistake, but that's okay, other students can see this work. Ideally, I would have gone over a rubric in class, and you could use this for an AP class, but you could also basically use it for any testing class or any test that you're using a specific rubric for, and other students can grade it. So if I'm a different student, I can go through and I could give it a grade of eight. The value of the comments is then the student has to explain why. I gave Ms. Gimbel oops, an eight because she showed correct work with a derivative, but failed to plug in the values accurately. This description is not very specific, but however you want your students to understand this or respond, this way you have an effective manner of allowing students to show their work and communicate with each other online and in the same space. I particularly like Padlet because you can use it in class and it updates instantaneously. Alternatively, it also works as an asynchronous tool or for homework. All right, thank you for coming.